we had this house and we had a dog and my mom and dad didn't take 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 care of the dog correctly so it just went to the bathroom all over the place and then we had this like basement and then it was just dirty all the time and we had bug beds we just we, we destroyed them just seeing five boys being treated like they're not part of anything. It was it was hard, hard to swallow, man. Five kids came to your house smelling bad. They didn't know how to brush their teeth or eat correctly. We never, honestly, we never drank water, just soda and soda and soda because it was cheaper. So yeah, that's probably one of the reasons why I was 260. Aiden used to be 180. You go to the corner store and get the cheapest thing, you know, to eat. That's what what the life was about, I'm not gonna lie. Just getting anything to fill me up. Oh, my new middle name? It's Phoenix. It means to rise from the ashes, to have a rebirth. A new beginning, yeah. So my name is Benicia Sanchez. I have two biological daughters. I have a stepson. I have a stepdaughter. So we basically were a family of four. As of June 4, we went from a family of four to a family of nine overnight. <laughs> Logan is the baby of the house and Logan gets away with murder. Peyton is Sir talk a lot. He does not shut up. He just talks, talks, talks. The minute he wakes up in the morning, Ethan is my warrior. I call him that. Like I said, his nickname to me, for me is Daddy Ethan. Aiden is <laughs> Aiden. <laughs> kind of on the spectrum. I did get him diagnosed. Uh, so very bright, very bright boy. Xavier's actually an amazing kid. He's um, very protective of his brothers. He's very humble, very humble. So Xavier's always the one that wants, he's very um, aware of things. He, you know, he doesn't like to spend a lot. He, he's, um, he's more like a father figure, believe it or not. I'm not trying to use an excuse, but like, I guess I'm the oldest and it's hard for, harder for me to get, um, not attached, but to form a bond with everybody. It was honestly really hard to just accept that, but honestly, like, felt really good to just finally be adopted after a while. So at that time I had um, free time because uh, I had a knee surgery and I couldn't do much. My wife and I, we attend to a local church, it's called Cabaret uh, Tabernacle. They have a program called uh, Boxwood. It's basically kids that are on probation that are having issues. So we volunteered. My, my husband was actually mentoring Jesus, which is their older brother. That's how I got to meet Jesus. Um, Jesus used to tell my husband, you know, little bits and pieces of what was going on. I really didn't get that involved. He actually spent Thanksgiving with us and, you know, we were trying to help him out as much as we could. The way he talked about his brothers, he wished he could give them a better life. Uh, everything in the world. But um, he was struggling. He had, he had, a, I think, much rougher than them. He experienced uh, much, much more than they did. On one of my visits that I had with him, he told me that his brothers were going to be evicted. To be honest, I didn't, I didn't believe him. A week, two weeks passed by and he repeated the same statement. He then gave me a call on February 11th saying, Eddie, this is it. They're really going to get evicted. I'm not going to lie, I don't remember much from it. I used to just wake up, stay in my room, and that's it. I was just try to find some food upstairs. We just, yeah, that's it, honestly. We stayed in our room all day. We probably just watched YouTube all day. Yeah, that's it. But like, it, and it smelled bad in there. And this person came to live in there, but I don't know why he even came there in the first place. 
like it was in like downstairs there was like another room so there was like this big room and then on the other side there was like this, it was like this um small room and the guy stayed in this small room but i don't know why my mom did that so i spoke to my wife we thought about it um it's a big responsibility you know my daughter had just graduated my son had just left to the national guards i'm like oh my god do i really want to do this they called us and they you know my husband spoke to me he said yes automatically i'm not gonna lie to you he automatically said yes i had my doubts and by then my wife and i we were already uh certified to be foster parents but i was looking about you know maybe thinking about getting a little girl you know one, one child we got five boys I'm just grateful to have a, a strong wife by my side, a strong woman that can really guide me in that direction. That's me. We spoke about it. I finally said, okay, let's do it. And that was it. You know, then two days later, they were at our house. <laughs> my wife and I, we couldn't turn our backs. We couldn't. And who knew that Valentine's Day was going to be a, such a blessing day? He, like I said, he was on board 100%. I more gave in because I just felt it was the right thing to do. I didn't, I'm not going to lie, like I wasn't 100% sure about it, even when I said yes. But in my mind, it was like either, you know, we do have the space, all our bedrooms are empty, and how do I let all these kids get separated? because at that point, that night before, they had already been split up. Um, I'll talk about it. So like, I was by myself, so it was a little scary for me. It was like in, it was like in this apartment, it was like some bunk beds. I think the guy who like, was like watching me, I think he already had kids, because I saw some um, pictures of the other kids. I went to, at the day after that, I went to school and then I had to wait in the office until like somebody had to pick me up, until somebody picked me up. And then ah. they said that um, we we're gonna pick up all my brothers. And then that's when we went to the house, um, Benny and his house. So to me, it was like, how, how do I live knowing I had the room to take all these kids and keep them together? How could I say no? So that's what made me say, okay. So before they arrived, um, they actually called us. They told us that they were going to be here in the evening. They came in, they brought in bunk beds. You know, they, they built the bunk beds. They had quilts, everything for them. They, you know, I guess DCPMP, you know, actually gives us that. They set everything up. Um, the boys actually came in the evening, actually. It was almost six, seven o'clock, maybe. We all got here and Eddie opened the door for us. The, the, the original caseworker came in with them. Um, like I said, they were scared. They, like, the fear was overwhelming. Like it, you saw the fear, you saw the, oh my God, what's going on. Strangers, like I wouldn't want to be rude. I was just with people I didn't know. It was just weird. I don't know how to explain it though. Like, I don't know. It's just, just weird. It was an overwhelming feeling. I mean, you know, we didn't know them, they didn't know us. I saw that they were very afraid. You know, Logan, especially, Logan was only two and a half. Didn't want anyone to touch him. Like, he actually went and hid underneath my dining room table and he was like crying. And then, um, you know, as the night went on and we started talking, we bought them pizza. Remember, it was like, it was, I, have, I didn't eat the night before, so I was really hungry, so I ate a lot that night. You know, I had to give them a few showers. My niece is a hairstylist, and she came over and gave them all haircuts. So it was like, you know, just trying to get them into feeling as comfortable as you can at, you know, at that moment. I mean, I couldn't even imagine what was going through their heads. So it, I was trying to make them feel as comfortable as I could. But it, it was it was horrible, to be honest with you. It was horrible. It was very emotional. I mean, 
It was exciting and it was depressing. Being able to provide to them a better life at the same time, it was a lot of mixed emotion. Um, we had diapers, bringing things to the house. So it was mayhem. A lot of sadness. Honestly, it was, it was, it was sad for me as a person, as a mom. It was, it was sad to see the state that these boys were in. Because I, I don't really want to tell anybody this, but like, I used to stink, like bad, like older. And like, they would just like, make fun of me. Like, it was crazy. But I mean, yeah. Just seeing five boys being treated like they're not part of anything, it was, it was hard. Hard to swallow that. Five kids came to your house smelling bad. They didn't know how to brush their teeth or eat correctly. Um, they were out of school for a whole year. Adjustment that the boys and us, we had to do was get something much bigger. Because where we were, it was too small. So we purchased this house for them. Um, they struggle with the fact that mom and dad weren't there. Yeah, I didn't go for school. Go to school for like six months straight, freshman year. Um, yeah, I didn't go to school. I only went to school for two weeks, and it was pretty bad. Not like, yeah, I, I, like, not that I begged her, but like I told her constantly, hey, can you sign me up for school and everything, but she never did. Like for me to ask her to sign me up for school, it's kind of like, you know, it's not that, it's not that good, you know. For me, you know, a kid that was just, you know, 13 or 14, 13, just to ask her, you know, hey, can you sign me up for school? It's like, it's kind of, you know, not say disappointing, but it is, you know. I was living it. I, I knew that these boys were bright and they were smart, but. You know, they didn't know their timetables. They didn't know their timetables. They didn't know how to read. They didn't know, they would cry to do their homework. They would hide their homeworks. But I also saw when you had a, a conversation with them that these were bright boys that just needed to be helped. So once we got the, like, low, um, Peyton, Ethan, Aiden, they have 504 plans, IEP plans. They take, you know, they were taken out for resources. I fought with DCPMP. I actually got tutoring lessons with um, Sylvan. Like, I, I mean, I fought for these boys. And, you know, Aiden right now reads at a 12.9 reading level. He was at a 2.3 reading level when I first got him. And we're talking about two and a half years. You know, so I, I saw the potential. They just needed the help. That was it. So... That alone, we knew we had our work cut out. That alone made, made our decision much stronger, a lot stronger. To me, I mean, my husband is more, you know, friendly, outgoing, so he like kind of joked at them, talked to them. I kind of stood back, to be honest with you, and I just looked at all of them, and it was sad. It was a sad moment for me as a mother. It really, really was. I never experienced, experienced anything like that. I mean, I wasn't, you know, we weren't rich growing up, but my mother and my father were always there. So to me, to even experience that and see that fear in their eyes, it was like, wow. Like, I thought about my daughters and, you know, my stepson, and I'm like, oh my God, this is heartbreaking. That, that was my initial thought. Um, that's how I felt. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a very, I would say, awkward, intimidating time for us. Because, like I said, I mean, you have five kids, you know nothing about um, the condition that they were in. The way those kids looked was devastating. We all had fevers, and Logan had a fever. Like, he almost passed away. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Very unhealthy, very unhealthy. As a mother, I just thought, wow, you know, how can you do this? You know, that was my initial thought at that moment, honestly. It was like, how can you do this to your child? It, it, was, it was sad. To me, it was an overwhelming, sad, sad day. And me, myself, I was about that.
I know the struggle that is not having your parents. Just be in a survival mode all the time, man. I guess that's what God put in my heart. Okay. I gave you a chance, gave them a chance. I would never say it was a happy day. It was scary, it was sad, and it was very, um, a rude awakening for me as well as to how many children actually go through this and we don't know about. That's, that's what I remember about that day. With the little ones, I think it was easier. Peyton, of course, because Peyton just talks, talks, and talks. Ethan was more reserved. Ethan was very quiet. Um, Xavier was the one that kept watching us, like, you know, what are these people doing? Xavier, he took care of us. Now, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Helps me out, like, a lot. And he doesn't annoy me. Like, one of the first few days there, like, the, whenever, like Logan started crying, he wake up and go take care of him, but mom said it was okay. That's when he felt, this is his home. This is my home. But I feel like when they started seeing that, hey, this is like a norm, I had to put them, you know, we had to show them how to brush their teeth, how to take showers, every day-to-day -day things that kids at that age should know, they really didn't know. So it was more of, I guess because we gave them something of a normal lifestyle, I should say. I mean, I'm gonna say normal, but I guess more of a routine. They actually started stepping into it and be like, okay, so this is okay, like we eat breakfast. You know, um, Peyton was like obsessed with food. Every three minutes, he's like, what am I gonna eat? I'm, and it, it's all normal. So it was like, okay, we're gonna have breakfast, we're gonna have lunch. I took them out and, you know, even taking them out, I would have to say, they were all steal. I took them one time to, um, oh my God, that restaurant in, um, with all the animals that make noise, I haven't forget the name. And they were like stealing stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? He was like, oh, this is what we do. I'm like, no, that's not what you do. So it was breaking them out of a lot of habits that they have come, you know, grown accustomed to. But I just feel that because they saw that we actually really cared, they started opening up. You know, two, three nights into it, the little one, the two-year-old had a huge fever. And my husband had to get up and he laid with him on the couch and he was burning up. and. After that, him and my husband, you know, they, the bond was like incredible. Took a little bit more time with me, with Logan. But, you know, so it was like little things like that that I would do. Like they would wake up, you know, they would urinate in the bed. And, you know, it wasn't like I would get upset. I would get up and like change them. And I guess they saw that, oh, okay, they're not that bad. That they, They're really helping us. And, that, you know, I had to gain their trust. It was gaining their trust. That's all it was. And, you know, we had our ups and downs, but that's what we did. And even Xavier, once Xavier, I feel, started getting comfortable, the rest followed. They had to relearn a lot of stuff. Um, Aiden, the one that likes to read a lot, he and Ethan, they were, they were at a third grade level. So they wanted to hold, hold them back and we fought for that. Benny, he, she helps me out a lot incredible woman that spots <laughs> anything and just fights for it. From tutoring to tramper station to school and daycare. Honestly, the, the hardest part was dealing with the biological parents. Her mom and dad they didn't wanna basically be in her life. Um, if their mom was trying to make an effort to see them, she would be under the influence of drugs. And it was sad that you're not fighting for your kids. Um, Benny had the worst part of it because she was dealing directly with the mother and father. Me, I, I didn't want to. I had the boys in my mind and that's it. Dealing with the ups and downs, their instability, 
you know, having to deal with them not showing up, having to deal with the courts and going there and the boys knowing all of this and, you know, and, and the uncertainty of, oh, yeah, maybe they're going to, you know, she's going to get it together. Maybe we're going to go back to her. You know, the boys had really hard, hard issues with that. There were, especially Xavier, he had questions on why, uh, why, why are, are not, why then I'm making an attempt to be with us or, or, or fix their lives. It, it wasn't easy to explain the circumstances that they were going through. Xavier knew about it. Ethan and Aiden uh, had suspicions. But at the end of the day, they they decided to make their own decision. The whole entire day to day dealing with seeing the boys on that roller coaster that was the worst part of it. It really was. Uh, the father, ever since you signed his rights away, we haven't heard anything about him. He used to call a lot. He stopped. Um, Mom had her visitation rights taken away. Uh, she passed about three months ago. Um, so the pain wasn't as much as it would have been if she was in their life consistently. So I did have... I had a relationship with her. I communicated with her a lot. I mean, like I said, as a mother, I felt that it was important for me to actually form a relationship with her because of the boys. You know, I always looked at it that way. Um, I was angry with her for a very long time. You know, her and I, she was sometimes very disrespectful. You know, whatever issue she was having, she was having a lot of issues, the boyfriend, you know, the courts. I was angry as a mother as, how do you do these to these boys? How do you let these boys go get into this condition? How do you not take them to school? Her and I had our disagreements. I have invited her, you know, to come over for Christmas. I tried reaching out to her. I was involved, but um, I detach myself a little bit from it because I didn't want to be so focused on that aspect and let the boys suffer a little. I had my role, still have my role. Benny has her role. And at the end of the day, we meet in a, and just speak about the legal battles that we had because it's been a it's been a rough one. Like I said in the beginning, it hasn't been easy. I changed how I felt and how angry I was at her. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, when I adopted the boys, DCPMP gave me a package, I guess, with everything that happened with the boys. And after reading that, I saw that she was reported back in 2007. So now we're talking about 12 years that this has been going on. You know, it, it, it was just sad, but when she passed away, you know, I, I spoke with the sisters, with the aunts, which I also have a good relationship with. And um, they, you know, I, I, we raised money so that we could bury her. She actually passed away in Pennsylvania. We had to bring her to New Jersey. My oldest daughter, we opened up a GoFundMe account. We raised all the money. DCPMP also helped with the cost of the burial, you know, getting clothes for the boys. I mean, it was expensive. We got her a plot here in Linden so that the boys could actually go visit her. Then I said to myself, something has to change. She was reported over 10, 12 times. And, you know, I know people blame DCPMP, but now that I'm involved with this whole system or was involved with the system, these caseworkers have so many cases, so many children, that you cannot blame them for failing to actually see when somebody really needs help. You, they go into these homes and they ask the children, also, did she hit you? Were you not going? As a child, how are you going to say to them, oh, yes, knowing that you're going to be taken away? You're going to lie. At this point now, I feel that if somebody would have intervened 10 years ago, 
this maybe would have happened. You know, she probably would have been alive. The opiate epidemic now is, is, is insane. You know, she was addicted. She was addicted to, you know, heroin, opium drugs, and that's what actually ended up, you know, terminating her life. So to me, I just feel that the whole system, something has to be done that we can help these mothers that when they get reported, it's not so quick to go in and remove these children, but at least really find out what is really going on. Because I, I just feel that she could have had a chance to survive if this was addressed 12 years ago when it was first reported. So what went wrong? What went wrong with the system? And something has to change. It really, really does. But I honestly now feel sorry for her because I just feel that we could have done better. The system could have done better. That's how I feel. There were visitations with her. Um, the visitation actually, they ended up being terminated because out of the three visits that the boys actually had, which were supervised, she was actually high when they got there. The first visit that Xavier went to, um, because they did give the boys the option of going or not going. Xavier went the first time and then he said, I, I can't do this. The second visit, um, Ethan came home and he, and he was like so depressed. I'm like, and it was like going backwards, you know. By the third visit, um, Aiden came home and said, I, I don't want to go. Like she doesn't even talk to us. She's on her phone. She doesn't pay attention to us. I don't want to be there. So, and then the, they called me and told me that they were actually, I guess the, the therapist that was there actually called DCPMP and actually terminated the visit because she was high when they were there. The judge actually terminated all her visits and I fought for educational rights and um, medical rights because I had to ask her for permission. When I had to, you know, do IEP plans, she wouldn't show up. It was, you know, if I, the boys needed medication, she had to give me permission. And I finally went to court and I said, listen, I can't do this. Like, I'm, I'm missing work. I'm, I'm going to all these appointments. I'm going to the schools. I'm, these boys are so behind, you know, academically, they, they're so, I said, I need to be able to get these boys help without having to go look for this lady. And the judge finally agreed and gave me the right to make the medical decisions and the educational decisions for the boys. And that's when things actually started going very, very well for us because I was able to get the help that they needed without all this stress and frustration of her not showing up. She was always under the influence. That's how she passed. And they understood the three oldest one. It really hit them, but not as hard as we thought it was going to. Uh, she passed away in February. Um, she overdosed on, I'm not sure what, but she overdosed. It, it did hurt a lot. It really like that, that, that really did hurt. Um, yeah, the, um, the way I found out is just not the best because, you know, <laughs> um, someone posted it on their account on Instagram and then I found out that way. It was like, and I text uh, my mom, um, I was like, what's happening right now, you know? And then she, was, she tried to like play it off like, <laughs> Like nothing, what are you talking about? But then um, they picked me up early from school, like from uh, Scotch Plains. And then uh, like the vice principal walked into my classroom saying that, um, hey, your parents are here to pick you up. And it was like, that's when I knew, like I did. And it was uh, my dad and Eddie there. So it did hurt, yeah. Um, I cried a lot, like that was probably like the most I've cried. Um, but Eddie was there downstairs the whole time, my dad was there. Um, and then around 12, my mom came, then, yeah, it was, it was a tough day. I don't regret it. It's been rough, but I don't regret a bit. They're, you seen them, how respectful they are. They're, they act their normal age, so. 
it's it's something new for me because not having mom and dad in my life and just being from state to state or from Puerto Rico to New York, it was hard to understand how to raise five boys at the same time. It's exhausting. I, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's exhausting. I, If you were to talk to me three years, four years ago, I would never would have thought I would have been in this position. I'm not gonna lie, you know. Uh, it's. It's exhausting, but it's also very rewarding. It's as a mother, you know, and I said this when I adopted them, it's changed me as a mother as well. You know, people always say, oh my God, you know, you're so nice. How can you help with these boys and the difference that they're making, you're making in their lives. But it's also vice versa. Like as a mother, you know, if you speak to my daughters, I was very, very strict. Like everybody knows this. I was very strict. You know, I'm very strong on education. You know, like I said, I grew up poor. We, I grew up in Washington Heights. Um, uh, to me, you know, education is a way out. I know some people don't feel that way, but it is what it is. That's the way I feel. You know, my daughters went to college. They both have bachelor's degrees. My little one is going to be going to medical school. Um, my Our son graduated from high school. We're still fighting with that one, but, you know, he's finally just enrolled in college. So to me, it's something um, they've actually changed who I am as a mother as well. And they've made me actually grow, grow as a person, to be honest with you. Like, I have a lot more patience now. I, I'm exhausted. You know, I, I work full time. You know, I, I, I actually, you know, have a huge responsibility at work as well. But when I come home, the love that those boys give me and the way they are with me, and it's like you said, they're so welcoming. They're so, you know, Xavier is so appreciative of everything. Like, he's so humble. And it just has changed my whole outlook in life and I it's actually even giving me a purpose because I need to do something about the whole system and that's my goal now that's how I feel that's how I feel no no it's a, it's, it's a lot of work I mean um you know um the state actually they do you know help me financially is that enough absolutely not but they do help I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say they don't the boys do have um state insurance so that also helps um but you know, I work, I, I, I work full time, you know, my, my husband works, it's, you know, we, it's a lot, you know, our, our groceries, you know, the clothing, the expense, it's, it, it, it's a lot of money, you know, it's a lot, but at the end of the day, we're happy, and that's what matters to me, you know, I have clothes in bins and bags and whatever, and my coworkers are great. They help me. Like, you know, the doctors that I work with, they all have children. They give me clothes for the boys. You know, my mother helps a lot. My um, niece, Tassie, like, you know, they help with picking up the boys. You know, that's another thing. You know, the dentist appointment, the doctor's appointments, the psychiatry. The, uh, it, it's, it's overwhelming. I mean, sometimes I come home and I'm like, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. But, you know, like I said, I, I look at them and I look at the change how positive how how well they're doing in school how well Xavier's doing like he's a totally different kid and it just makes me keep going you know I'm reading that book right now actually this is not the life I ordered so it's like you know it's it's a very big learning experience for me I'm not gonna lie to you it really is it really is I, I feel as if like she really even though she may not have been ready like but she did um, make sure that we had everything even though we weren't her kids or we didn't have that bond yet, she always made sure that we were okay. Seeing their change, seeing how happy these kids are, seeing how good they're doing in school. You know, Xavier's about to start driving. Um, it, it's just like seeing the growth and literally seeing the transformation of what I knew they could become. So it's just like living that day to day and seeing how much they've changed in a great way. To me, it's the most rewarding thing in the world. Honestly, it really is.
fries. You two are here to adopt five children by the name of Logan Liam Vasquez. Logan, raise your hand. Thank you. <laughs> Aiden Nazir Vasquez. Peyton Javat Vasquez. Ethan Javat Vasquez. And Xavier Aaron Vasquez. So congratulations. Wait, I like both of them. No, no, you have to pick one. I like both. 